number one thing, um, before we can even do deliverance, before we can do healing, um, the number one thing is that you need to have peace in your salvation. Um, the word says that your salvation, like the, you have the joy of your salvation, you have peace in your salvation, knowing that um, no matter what this comes in the end of days, that you are saved by grace and grace alone. It's not by works. It's not by privilege. It's not by honor. It's not by your like what you did for God. It's yeah. simply just because you believed and you called on the name of the Lord, you are saved. And so I just want to encourage you guys, if you're not feeling the, the peace and the joy that comes in your salvation, that's our prayer for number one. Um, because before all things, right, before anything else can happen, you need to experience their salvation. You need to experience the joy that comes in through your salvation. Because when we pray for you and we lay hands on you, we can't give you joy if you don't have salvation. We can't give you peace if you don't have salvation. And so that's going to be our, our altar call number one. Our altar call number two is going to be um, for any healing. Um, of course, once you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, I mean, we can cast out that spirit of infirmity and you'll be healed in the name of Jesus. We believe that um, God didn't intend for you to be uh, broken, to be destroyed. When he created Adam and Eve, he didn't create Adam and Eve and then break his ankle. He yeah. created him just how he wanted to be, and that was completely whole, completely healed, and in good health completely. And so we're going to believe that um, tonight God can heal you in this room. In, in Colonial High School, he can heal you in the name of Jesus. Miracle signs and wonders don't stop at church. Miracle signs and wonders don't stop where there's a professional evangelist. Let me tell you, the Spirit of God moves where the Spirit of God chooses to move. And I tell you that when we're, we have this body of believers here, God is moving within this room. So don't feel like you have to go to a church. Don't feel like you have to, I mean, go to a church. But like, <laughs> right here, it can happen right here. Breakthrough happens right here. Breakthrough happens when you come face to face with the Lord. So that would be our all call number two. And our all call number three, and the reason why I made this last um, is because um, it's just, it's so important to have Jesus as the center of your life when we when we do deliverance. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the word says that um, when you cast out a demon and you go home and you go back to that sin, seven more are waiting for you. And so the big thing is, I don't want to deliver you here and then you go home and invite seven more into your life. I don't want to have you could be completely set for here and then when you go home or when you go back to the streets or when you go find your boy and you get that dope, right? You're not going to go back to that and get seven times more demons. Because that's not my job to give you seven times more demons. My job is to show you the glory of God. And that's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And I'm telling you guys what you need to do is you need to, first of all, repent. You need to accept Jesus. You need to have faith in Jesus. And then he will set you free. So, the and also, we're going to do communion. Um, that will happen right after we do the, the first call. Because um, the word also says that communion is sacred and those who do it outside of, um, you know, his body, they, that, let them be cursed, pretty much. That's what the word says. Um, something along those lines. I'm probably missing it out a little bit, but generally, yeah. you, you're supposed to be in good standing. Not good standing, but just supposed to understand what it means. Yeah. So when we do this communion, I want you to understand that just like Timothy, when nobody saw him, when, when he felt shut out from the whole world, God saw him. And that's the whole symbolism of the cross. That even though the, the law put us to death, even though Satan kept constantly persecuting us, and even though we had no access to salvation, God gave his bodies freely so that we could have that salvation, so that we could have that joy that God gives freely. You know, there were so many things that the Israelites really needed that they couldn't have. You know, when they got leprosy, they were forced to go into the wilderness. When they got sick, they were forced to be outcast. But we have a Holy Spirit. We have a God that, that died and took those burdens for us so that we could be set free. And so, what I want you guys, when you get, take communion, to do it in remembrance of what he did for you. To do it remembering that Jesus is, like, literally died. He, the, he says it out, he got whipped 39 times because 40 would be considered death. So 39 times he got whipped. And that, that stuff was crazy. Can you all saw Passions of the Christ? Yeah. That stuff is scary. Yeah. I, I could never imagine going through half of what Jesus went through. But he went through it all so that we could have salvation. He went through it all so that we could be here today and that you can find that deliverance, you can find that healing, you can find that, that, that breakthrough that he's been waiting for you. As I said, the first altar call is if you need peace in your salvation. Um, the biggest thing is that a lot of us feel like we've said the sinner's prayer, right? And we feel like that's our salvation. And, and, and honestly, it's even easier than that. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have that peace in your salvation. And I know 
all of you guys at least little surface level. So I know all of you guys at one point accepted Jesus. So I want you all to know that you do have your salvation. And this isn't a salvational prayer. This is a peace prayer. Um, the biggest thing is that so many people, they, they kind of forget the strength of their salvation. Yeah. And, the, and we, like, even me, oftentimes, I kind of forget when I'm struggling with sin, struggling and, and wrestling with God, I forget like God still loves me beyond all that he died for me. So if you need peace for your salvation, um, I invite you to just come up. We're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you. And we're going to proclaim the blood over your life. My name is Timothy Garan, and you got to be speaking about my testimony today. Amen. Woo! <laughs> uh, all right. But before I start my testimony, I want to, you know, speak about how the opportunity that I have speaking to him, praying to him, and him answering my prayer, which is amazing. Let's start with the verse, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 through 19, 19, 13, excuse me. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Well, I felt very, 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 very depressed before, you know, actually coming in with the Lord and just me, not only me, not only my mindset, not only my actions, but just my family too. They were, they were just, they were just, uh, there was just blocks over me, and a big part was my family because, of course, you know, you live with your family. So, like, just them drinking, you know, every single time, smoking, cursing, talking bad about the Bible, you know. And I, I, I acknowledged myself before coming to God as liking my own gender, being homosexual. So just them talking about it, I used to get angry, so angry, so frustrated. I used to listen to secular music. It was very, very discerning and <laughs> it's making me shake a lot and move. But, but then, one day, I just had enough. I just, I was like, I'm done with all this. I don't want this life anymore. I don't want my family to be like this anymore because they're not in need of this, you know? They're not in need of this sinfulness, this devilish, demonic speaking, hearing, you know, looking, lustful, disgusting, demonic. I dislike that very much. So I became desperate for God. So I prayed. I prayed. I said, send somebody to me, Jesus, Lord. Somebody, send a leader, send a friend, send a brother, send a sister. <clears throat> That's exactly what he did in less than two weeks. <laughs> in less than two weeks, a boy named Jason came up to me at lunch. I'm just sitting there, very awkward, looking at everybody's eyes while they either pass by or they just get eye contact with me and still pass by. Which is sad. But Jason comes up to me, he says, he says, hi, my name is Jason. <laughs> What's your name? Timothy. Timothy. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Always have. Any single demonic thing that was in me, I always still believed in Jesus, no matter what, because I know he was the truth. Let 
you start another verse. First Peter chapter three, verse twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. I just felt like what I prayed for, not only did it come real, but what I prayed for it was one hundred percent truthful, like it was in a perfect time. Because what I prayed for, it was correct and it actually came because every single time I prayed, it either didn't come true or like it didn't, you know, or it just, it just, it's unanswered to this day. So what I probably paid for, prayed for in my past were incorrect things. And that's what the verse is trying to explain. If you pray for the incorrect things, <laughs> he's not going to make it into your reality. You know? So, and how my mindset was five years ago, six years ago, I understand now why he hasn't made my prayers. But yeah, let's continue on the story of, you know, Jason, you know, <laughs> Jason meeting me, you know, I said yes. Then he begins to, he said, I'm a, I feel like, I reach him, I feel like speaking to everybody. So he goes out to the crowd. There's, you know, a couple of grown year kids, all around group of friends, and Jason just starts speaking and talking facts, you know, about Jesus. And I love that because I can see the boldness. I can see, I can hear the faithful coming out of his tongue. And I was like, yes, you know, that's from Jesus. I was like, yes. This is my prayer, like this is my prayer and more to come obviously, but this is my prayer. I'm gonna continue on this path because this path is golden. It was golden from the beginning, it's gonna keep on staying golden because my path was great. You know, I was thinking, I was like, not that this is relevant, but if I weren't to hear Jason speak, you know, preach that day, would I still think of him like the same? Would I still have the same relationship with him? But I have my trust in God. I have my trust in Jesus. And I, I believe, you know, he led us together for a reason. So, preaching time, all right. <laughs> I learned a lot of things, you know, ever since, you know, I truly accepted God as my Lord and Savior, I truly, you know, revealed myself to Him and to the people who put me, you know, put upon my life, which I love. So, what I say is, instead, instead of complaining and letting the devil do his work upon you and others, pray. Like, God loves you. Like, He hears your tears. You know, he counts and understands your tears. Every single tear is a word, and he understands literally everything you're speaking to him because you're his child. God moves in ways that you never comprehend. Yeah, you heard that a million times, literally. I heard that a million times. But until you truly understand that, you know, that's the day where you're going to truly fall for God. God uses you to affect not only yourself but others because he wants your heart. He's desperate for your heart. Like, I'm desperate for him right now. You know, I'm hungry for him right now. He's desperate for our heart. He's desperate for us because we're his children. He literally made us. Just our father, you know. It's... He's desperate for you. But if you're not willing to give yourself to the Lord, He can't accept you. In any way, in any way, He can't accept you in any way unless if you're willing to give 100.
I was thinking of these words earlier while I was at school, while there was many noises around me, you know, many distractions. It was just these two sentences of stay still, of waiting of him and his presence. And the second sentence was on knees and eyes full of redness and tears on his on the judgment day. That means that I was thinking about that those words just popped up and I was like, I'm not gonna stay still anymore. You know what I mean? Because I can't stay still and not get anything accomplished in the name of Jesus. You know what I mean? Because he's using me and others. But on that judgment day where the people, when it's too late, they're on their knees, their eyes red, crying full of tears. Last minute, last second. But that's just the judgment day. Just think of it, him saying, you come face to face with God. Just him saying to your eyes, to your heart, you know, depart from me. Like, he, he has to say that hundreds of millions of times to his own children that he created. I can imagine how it is to be a father and saying that to, to his creation that now they're going to have to suffer because they chose wrong. Especially the the people who claim as Christians, the one who goes to church, the one who reads the word, the one who, you know, those Christians, Christians are really not going to heaven. And that's just scary because, you know, you think you're doing the correct thing And you just tend to abuse, you know, sin and like every single opportunity, not that you can get, but the devil can put upon you. You tend to abuse sin, acting that you can just keep on repenting and keep on getting saved. But in reality, at the end, God is not going to take that, those words. He's not going to take those words. He's not going to take those tears. So I say is just pick up that heart that God provided for you and use it like never before, excuse me, never before, because this world is getting more wicked and wicked until the time runs out. And your heart will either become two things. It will either go two ways. So it will either go it will run eternally or it will run on empty. And that's where it's gone. So I say choose God or choose yourself. I want you guys to understand the deliver, the deliverance, the grant within, the transferness of the one high God that he has executed through me. I love him. I do. So what I have to say to you guys is don't step into the wrong fire. For one fire provides the Holy Spirit and the other one full of suffering. 